What's up guys, it is Blake Harris back at you again with the Haven Event Space. So excited for episode three. Technically episode four if you count the groundbreaking, but uh, episode three of how to build a wedding venue with the Haven Event Space. So check it out, we got some swag. Pretty cool, right? Um, definitely tons of updates since last time we've talked. You guys, I'm so sorry for how long it's taken me to get a video up. Uh, things are actually happening in real life. They're happening. So uh, it has been crazy. We broke ground. We are under construction. We are booking weddings. I'm losing all my hair. I'm just kidding, but it's been crazy. So, so excited to share an update with you guys. But honestly, what I want to spend a lot of time today doing is talking about um, a couple specific things that I keep seeing comment after comment after comment about you guys are asking for a few specific pointers specifically in reference to finding the property that we purchased how we procured financing and ultimately how we went about physically starting our event space so I'm um, gonna share those today really excited to talk a little bit more in depth so let's get right into it So first off, let's talk about what we looked for in a property. So when we were looking for a property for the Haven event space, uh, one of the first things we did obviously was just start looking online. Uh, we knew we wanted over 20 acres because we wanted to have space for the outdoor venue, the pond, and have lots of areas for photo ops. So we started looking around in our market. I knew the general area of where I wanted to be uh, just based on where other venues in our market were and what uh, I, f I felt like brides and grooms would be looking for in a space. So we ended up contacting a real estate agent and starting to look at properties. Uh, to be honest, we looked at several. Uh, we actually made offers on three different pieces of land before we ended up selecting and purchasing the one that we ultimately have today. Um, and honestly, I believe everything happens for a reason because the first two we made offers on were great but they were nothing compared to what we ended up with. It's like all along there was a plan for us to be at this third property. It's perfect, you guys. I can't wait for you to see it even more. I know I've shown some drone footage in the past. It's got rolling hills, it's got beautiful trees. It was perfect to dig a pond. The building's gonna sit up on kind of a high point and overlook, and in 360 degrees of direction, there's nothing but beauty. It's gonna make a wonderful backdrop for wedding photos and event photos in general uh, for years to come. So we're really, really thankful. What what we were looking for specifically though came down to aesthetic, it came down to price, and it came down to location. Those were the three things that we were looking for. Uh, we knew where we wanted it to be, how much we were willing to spend, and what we wanted the vision of our property to look like. So if you're going out there and you're looking for a property, those are the things I would focus on. And honestly, again, that's what real estate agents are there for. They're experts. Go contact one, have them help you. They know the market. Uh, they'll be a huge resource for you. And let me say this. Our real estate agent actually had a ton of connections with the county that we ended up buying the piece of property in, which ended up kind of bridging to the next thing I wanna talk about, which is county zoning and permit regulations. Uh, it's not a fun thing to talk about, but it is a huge, huge part of opening a wedding venue anywhere in the US. One of the things you're gonna need to do first before you even purchase the land is reach out to your county's zoning and planning department. They're gonna tell you how your property is zoned or the property you're looking at is zoned and whether or not you legally are allowed to build a venue, a commercial business on that property. In our case, we purchased an agricultural property. It had been used as a soybean farm for the last 25 years. So uh, know that we were not allowed to build a commercial wedding venue on that property. So what did we do? We had to go through a process in our particular area. We live in the Midwest in Kansas City, just south of the city. Uh, we had to go through what's called a conditional use permit application process. A conditional use permit is a temporary permit that allows us to operate a commercial business on an agricultural property. You may be asking why would we decide to purchase a property that required a conditional use permit? Well, the reason is because conditional use permits in our area are 10 year permits. They allow you to open and operate your business in on that property for 
up to 10 years uh, with no additional permitting required. And then at the end of the 10 years, what they do is they evaluate your business. If it's been profitable, if it's been beneficial to the economy, and if it hasn't been a nuisance to the neighborhood and caused a bunch of problems, then they'll renew your, your conditional use permit with no issues. Um, there's lots of businesses out where I'm at that have those types of permits, and they've been in business for many, many, many years uh, and decades, honestly. So we're not concerned about that. We know that the Haven event space is going to be a beautiful asset to Miami County. It's going to be a, a breathtaking um, addition to the neighborhood that we're building it in, and we're not going to cause any problems. We'll be respectful of our neighbors and follow the regulations, finish on time, uh, and have our music shut off at certain times, stuff like that. So um, that is what we decided when we purchased our property. But again, biggest thing, you have to talk to the county before you make that purchase. The last thing you guys want to do is go and spend two, three, four hundred thousand dollars on a piece of land and find out you can't use that piece of land for your dream. So always have that conversation first, find out what's necessary, uh, find out what the county thinks. Are they super anti um, venue? Are they super anti event? Or are they more of a pro venue? I mean, in our area, we didn't really have a lot of these businesses. And so they were open to the idea of attracting tourists to our area and, um, and bringing them in and seeing our space and obviously making an addition to, to the environment and to the economy. So after we talked to the county and we found the piece of land, we went ahead and made the purchase. The next step for us was starting the process of designing and building the building. Uh, there's a lot of factors that go into that. You've got finding an architect, finding a builder, securing lending, um, you know, and then figuring out obviously the design and, and the furniture and everything that's gonna go into your property. So this was a big process for us. So I wanna kinda of walk through each step and give you guys a little bit of a breakdown of what we did. And I talked briefly about this in our first video about how we went about it, but I wanna dive deeper into that today. So first on the list, after talking to the county and buying the land, I have finding an architect. For us, we secured an architect by simply going out online and researching architects that had built event type buildings in the past. Our architect had experience building churches, they had experience building restaurants, they had experience in the commercial and hospitality industry that made us feel really comfortable and I was able to see some of their projects and, uh, and like I said in my first video, we interviewed several different companies and the one that we chose really saw our vision. They saw what we wanted to do and we felt right about it. So it wasn't really a tough decision because when you know, you know. And so I highly recommend if you're at that stage, just start making phone calls, booking meetings, go out and show these people what your dream is. And then honestly, you'll know when it's the right person. Uh, then once the architect is hired, that's when it gets fun. They help you do so much of the legwork on the back end once you've hired that position. So they helped us find our builder. Again, we interviewed several builders and when the right one came along, we knew. Uh, they helped us start talking to the county and getting our permitting and stuff in place. They helped us start talking to engineers uh, and start getting things figured out that we needed to know in order to get the building built. Uh, and then ultimately they designed the building from, from the ground up. They showed us here's layout options here's what kind of tile we can do here's what kind of flooring we can do and that's the fun part right actually designing it I remember the meeting when we sat down at the conference table in their office that day this was all pre-COVID and they showed me all of the uh, the different options for you know aesthetics of our building and going through and getting to pick what we wanted and what we liked and what we didn't like um, that is the coolest part because it feels real uh, now honestly it's been like two years since then and it still isn't actually finished yet so let me let me tell you it's gonna take time you guys there's a difference uh, between starting a quick little business that you can get off the ground really fast building a commercial building and, and a wedding venue um, especially of our size our building is just under 11,000 square foot on 40 acres that was literally a nothing piece of land uh, it's been a big project we've been working on this for about a mm, little over three years now um, and uh, it, it has been very rewarding but it is not something that happens overnight so set proper expectations prepare, dream, and then execute. All right, let's move on to the topic that all of you have been dying to know about. Lending, financing, getting the money to actually make your dream come true. You guys, I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. I want you to know the truth. Um, building a wedding venue is an expensive endeavor. Um, it doesn't have to be expensive, depending on the project that you want. And there are venues out there that are able to find existing buildings and make renovations and, and you know make it what they want. But ultimately, if you're starting from the ground up, having to hire all these people and everything that we're doing, uh, it definitely is not going to be cheap. All right, so when it comes to lending, there's a lot that you need to know in order to 
start the process, right? So I wrote down some things and I'd like to walk through what we specifically did in order to secure our lending because I'll be completely transparent, you guys. This was the most challenging aspect of this project for us. It's not for everyone, so don't let that scare you. Our situation was unique and we were trying to start a wedding venue that hosts events at the beginning of a global pandemic. That made a very challenging task of finding the right bank that wanted to lend money that saw the vision and that knew that this wasn't going to destroy the wedding industry forever. And we knew that if we did it now and we had this building up as things started to reopen, like it is, we would be on the corner of the market and capture all that business that had been basically put off for the last 12 to 18 months. And that's exactly what's happening to us now. It was the best decision we ever made, but it was two years of pure agony, honestly, trying to find lending for this. And uh, six months leading up to the pandemic and then a year into the pandemic, still fighting to find financing. So let's talk about what different financing options are for wedding venues. And let me say this, giant asterisk, alert, alert. I am not a financial services expert. I'm not a broker or a banker or a lender. I am a normal person who just went through this process and this is my perspective on what happened. I highly encourage you to talk to a banker, talk to a lender, talk to a broker and find your own experiences, okay? This is just what we did. And the reason I'm making these videos is because I couldn't find anything like this when I needed help. So at least you'll know what someone else did and maybe give you a few keywords to go start having conversations with these bankers yourself. So first and foremost, we ended up discussing first the option of doing what's called an SBA loan. An SBA loan is a small business administration loan that requires a fairly low down payment in order to build a commercial business when you're just starting out. So in our case, usually an SBA loan takes about 10% down. Um, it, it takes no less than 10% down. Uh, so for easy math, if you're building a million dollar building or opening a million dollar wedding venue, you're looking at about $100,000 of equity that you need to bring to that project. So people have asked, how much money do I need to have to start a wedding venue? That's a pretty good number, 10%, uh, if you go the SBA route. How do, how do you come up with $100,000? That's the question. For us, we ended up purchasing the land that we had in cash. We had another home that we'd sold and had some investments that we sold, and we were able to buy that piece of land in cash, and the bank looked at that piece of land as our equity injection into our project. So that was how they were willing to say, okay, these people have put in enough money now for us to fund their loan. So that's what we did. Um, you can do whatever you want, but that's just an option. So outside of SBA, there's two other types of loans as well. You've got a conventional loan, which typically conventional loans require more money down, but are usually a little less hoops to jump through, which is nice. Um, and then on the back end, you also have options for construction loans. So construction loans mean they'll just fund during construction. And then at the end of your construction loan, they do a takeout and another bank picks up the loan. That one's a little risky, but you can weigh your options. Um, so how do we go about starting this process with the lenders? I made a huge mistake, you guys. I went to bank after bank after bank after bank after bank. I probably am not exaggerating. I probably went to eight banks and had conversations about what we wanted to do. Here's what I'm looking to do. Here's how much money I need. Here's my plan. Here's who I am. Here's you know everything I've got. And I presented everything in a beautiful portfolio. Ribbon tied, bow on top, perfect presentation to a banker saying, take my money. And they said, no. <laughs> and it left me let down time and time and time again. So what did we do? Finally, after the 8,000 trillionth bank that we talked to, one of the bankers was kind enough to make a recommendation to me, and this changed everything. And I'm gonna make this recommendation to you right now. There's a, an actual program called the SBDC. It stands for the Small Business Development Center. I had never heard of this. Uh, this is not a paid endorsement, by the way. This is just my experience. The SBDC is a government-funded program that costs nothing to small business owners, and it is a program that helps small business owners find resources like funding, and other things. <laughs> I needed the funding. They helped me. You guys, I, I picked up the phone and I called these people and I said, hey, I've been working with bank after bank after bank and they have not helped us find the money we need to build our venue. Can you help? Lo and behold, he said, I know a guy. Hooks me up with what's called a broker, which 
I knew what a broker was, but I didn't really know what a broker was. And if you don't know what a broker is, a broker is someone who basically takes your deal in that pretty little package and that bow, like I told you, and they go set it on the desk of a bunch of different bankers that they have personal relationships with. And they say, listen, bro, you should really consider this. It's a really good project. Wink, wink. And then that broker helps sell your deal to those banks for you. So you're not sitting there in torture, going over your presentation and being let down for one reason or another over and over and over again, and then you pay them a small fee. Sometimes, sometimes the bank pays, pays the broker the fee. So for us, we got connected by the SBDC to a broker, um, and that broker was able to procure several different banks that wanted to, to, to fund our project within like, three days. It was crazy. Um, I went from literally being so frustrated that I could cry to being so excited that I was crying in a matter of 36 hours after this phone call, you guys. It changed everything. So if you're at that phase and you don't know what to do, please pick up the phone and call the SBDC. Ask if they have any recommendations. How can they help you find lending? Maybe they know a broker. Worst case scenario, if you're in the Midwest, let me know. I'll heck, hook you up with the guy that I got connected to. Uh, it's an amazing program, you guys. It, it is free. Again, government funded. Uh, the SBDC is awesome. So just my two cents. Uh, and they do so much more than just lending. Once the business is open, they can help with helping with payroll and taxes and all this stuff that as a new business owner, you may not know or need. Uh, I learned a lot about things they can offer and I'm fully going to be taking advantage of them once the, our business is up and running because I have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> So we'll figure it out. That was a lot. Let's all take a deep breath, right? This has been a lot of information, but I've got more. I want to keep going. I want this to be the video that everyone's been waiting for, right? So let's talk about what the banks needed. So I talked about that pretty little package with a little bow on top. What did that include? This is something you're gonna need probably before you even go to your architect. You should probably start putting this stuff together because it's gonna be very important to be able to physically show what you want. Let's do the lending side first. For us at the bank, the bank required a few things. They required resumes of both of the owners of the business. And in this case, it was my wife and I. If it's just you, that's fine. They're gonna need a resume. What they're looking for is experience in the industry. They want someone that comes to them that shows they have uh, basically attract success of being in the market that they're asking for money for. Uh, so you can't be someone that doesn't have any experience that wants to open a wedding venue. Unfortunately, it's, a, it's too high of a risk. A bank isn't going to lend you money. So you need to go get a job or get experience in the wedding industry before you try to start this project. So that is something you should probably know. For me personally, I've been doing weddings for a little over 10 years, throwing major corporate events for my company and also uh, business conferences and events um, for a long time. So that's kind of how I was able to, to sell our experience and, and get a bank that felt like I was a safe investment for their money. Outside of the resumes, they're also going to ask for a business plan. You guys, I could make a whole episode on a business plan. What I did is I went online and I found another wedding venue that had recently applied for funding and that had their business plan posted online. You guys, I stole their business plan. <laughs> I didn't. I stole the concept of their business plan and wrote my own. I took it as a as an example of what I needed. I followed section by section and the things they talked about because business plans need a lot of information. Why you're starting the business, market data, um, financial impact. Um, there's just, I mean, I, again, it could be a whole episode. Um, go do your research on how to write a professional business plan. In fact, I'll say this, and again, not a paid endorsement. I've been watching a lot of webinars online from um, different companies that help venues start up and build business plans and things like that. There are resources out there. There are webinars out there. Uh, if you Google how to start a wedding venue or write a wedding, a business plan for a wedding venue, you'll see these resources pop up. Uh, and I personally did not work with those, so I'm not going to speak to whether they were good or not, but I know they're out there. So go do your research, find out how to write a business plan and start writing it. Uh, next, they're going to need three years of sales projections. And you may think, well, how am I going to give them sales projections? I have no idea how much money I'm going to make. Well, Welcome to starting a business. I had to sit down with my imaginary calculator and say, I'm going to be a multimillionaire. No, I'm just kidding. I had to figure out how much realistically income we'd be bringing in on a monthly basis. And I sat down and I said, okay, 
The month we open, it's realistic, we'll do one wedding. We charge X amount for a wedding, it's gonna cost me this much for employees, this much for liquor, this much for electricity, this much for trash. It took some homework, you guys. It took a long time to put these sales projections together. But ultimately, it's a requirement for a bank to see your sales projections. They don't have to be perfect. In fact, we've well, changed our business plan from when we initial initially applied for lending and our financials are completely different than what they were going to be when we applied for the loan but they're better so that's not a bad thing for the bank so start putting together sales projections again uh the sbdc is a great resource there they hooked me up with a business advisor that actually had templates for business plans and for sales projections. I had already had ours done at the time, but uh, a great resource for you might be to connect with them as well. Um, so get a business plan put together, get your three years of sales projections. Next, what's your collateral? For us, it was our land. How are you gonna have your 10% down for your SBA loan? Be prepared to have that conversation. Next, it's time to get a bid from a contractor. So we've already got hired our architect, where we've selected our contractor. Now it's time for that contractor to see your vision. This is the building plan, this is how large it is. At this point, you've already paid your architect to design the building, all this stuff is done. We're getting towards the end of the process here and we're still prior to lending, just so you know. You have to have a bid before you go to a bank on how much this project's gonna cost. They're gonna usually wanna see two different companies with two different bids, and then why ultimately you decided to select the, the contractor that you did. So when you get your bid, uh, that's gonna show you how much money you need. And then lastly, you need to put together what's called an FF&E sheet. FF&E stands for Furniture, Fixtures, and Equipment. This is basically the sheet telling the bank how much money you need to go fill your venue with furnitures, fixtures and equipment, furniture, fixtures and equipment. Um, this basically will be your chairs, your tables, your couches, your ice machines, your bathroom toilets, your light fixtures, your doorknobs, everything you need to open your venue and make it a functional building. Uh, and by the way, there's so much more that I didn't even think about. Exit signs, capacity signs, handicapped parking signs, fire extinguishers. There's so much that goes into this that I was like, holy cow, I didn't even think of this. Uh, you need to put all of that into a list. What I did is I created an Excel spreadsheet, wrote down all the rooms, bride suite, groom suite, kitchen, main hall, foyer, bathrooms, patio, front porch. And I went through each and every room and thought, what do I need in this room? When I, I, I just pictured myself walking in, what needs to be there? Oh, I need a trash can. Oh, I need a fire extinguisher. Oh, I need light fixtures. And I started just putting down, I would go to Amazon, I'd go to you know wherever and look for the things that I wanted to put in that room and put the link and the cost and then totaled it all up. For us, it was way more money than I, I thought it was gonna be. Our furniture, fixtures, and equipment, just being transparent, is almost $100,000 for our venue. So, furniture, fixtures, and equipment is a huge part of getting your final step of your little package ready for the bank. So, get that all put together, get it ready, because you're gonna need it. So, the next thing I wanna talk about is diving into those county regulations a little bit. Uh, the county regulations are basically what the county is going to be asking for in order to approve you to build your business on that piece of land. For us, I mentioned we had to get a conditional use permit. I already explained what that is, but there's a lot of other stuff the county is going to want to know. How's the electrical going to work? The water, the sewage, the stormwater management plan, uh, the fire suppression system, the economic impact, the neighborhood impact. There's so many things that that county is looking for and that they're really trying to make sure that your business isn't gonna be a negative impact on the area. So be prepared to have those conversations. And again, an architect is gonna help you navigate these conversations versus if you go into the county alone and try to have these conversations yourself. All right, you guys. So this has been a lot of information and I want to leave you with some parting thoughts. For me, this has been one of the most challenging but rewarding projects of my entire life. Um, there was a few things I did to really keep my spirit up, and I think that um, this is something that will be really beneficial for you guys. So the first thing I wanna let you guys know is to dream. In the beginning, draw it out. Make a dream board, create a PowerPoint, do whatever you need to do to start putting concepts and ideas and imagery together to show your brain that this is possible. You can do this. You guys, I'm gonna show you something very personal. For the last three years, I've had this picture on the back of my phone. This is the picture of the wedding venue that we're building. And for three years, I've been staring at this picture, wondering if this was ever gonna happen, but it's actually happening right now. 
keeping your dream in front of you is a huge way to keep yourself motivated. And when you get all those no's from people or you have a rough day and you're like, is this really worth it? It reminds you that it will be. After dream, I want you guys to research, research, and more research. Go out online and do all the research you can. And that's what you're doing right now. I'm sure you probably found our video or follow our channel because you want to know, how do I do this? But you guys, my story and my wife and I's story is not gonna be your story. You're gonna have to write your own story. And all we can do is give you pieces of advice of things that we've done and help to motivate you to go out and do the same for yourself. And all that's gonna start by you actually just opening up the internet and doing some research because the information's out there. You just have to go and find it. This is a big one. I highly recommend that you go out and get involved in the industry ASAP. One thing I've been doing over the last few months that's been actually really exciting for me is I've been going to grand openings and open houses of other venues all over the Kansas City area. Um, there's been actually two brand new venues that also just opened, one about an hour from us, one about five minutes from us, and then one, there's another one about 45 minutes away opening. I'm going to their grand opening here later this week. You guys, it's been so rewarding to see these other venues opening and they're all different. There's so many different styles and aesthetics and sizes and benefits and features. And it's given me hope. It showed me if these people can do it, I can do it. And it showed me honestly what not to do. I've seen some things I'm like, wow, their bridal suite is the size of a of like a pantry. Like how is their bride gonna get ready in there for 10 hours? And some of them I've said, wow, their furniture is gorgeous. I'm getting rid of this and I'm changing this. So getting involved in the industry now and getting yourself in as many wedding venues as possible is really helpful. And I mean, here's the thing. Yes, it's competition, but the industry as a whole, the wedding industry as a whole is a community. In Kansas City, we have an entire wedding vendors community on Facebook that I'm a part of. And it's, it's, it's a friendship, it's a partnership, it's a community of people that are going through what you're going through and they are there to help you. So if this is something that you really are planning on doing, then to start, get yourself into that community. Start going to the networking events, start going to the open houses, start researching your competition and finding out what they're doing that's working and what's not working. And lastly, you guys, I wanna recommend that you just take this process one step at a time. This, again, has been one of the most challenging things I've ever done, and it's taken years now of my life and of my sleepless nights executing this, but you know what? It's one step at a time, and every day we're one step closer to our grand opening. You saw our video a few weeks ago of our groundbreaking ceremony, um, one of the most special days of my life. You can't see it in the video, but when some of those people were talking, we had our builder talk, our architect talk, our mentors in life talk, I was sitting there bawling the entire time, you guys, because it felt real. After years and years of heartache and pain and wondering if this was the right decision, it was happening. It was finally happening and it felt real and I could not contain myself. And I'm sure it's gonna be the same the rest of the process as well. I can't wait for our grand opening. We're only a few months away. It's Right now, it's April of 2021. Our grand opening is October of 2021. So it's gonna move fast. We are currently pouring concrete on the building, doing footings, digging footings, pouring concrete, and then they'll bring in the steel and the structure will go up really quickly. So. For us, things are moving right along, uh, but it's been one step at a time. So just start, take that first step. And again, create those dream boards, keep your dream in front of you and do anything you can to fight for what you want because it's never gonna happen unless you make it happen. So thank you so much guys for tuning in again today. It's been such a pleasure talking to you. Uh, again, comment down below if you have questions, more than happy. I'm trying to answer everything I can in my videos. and I promise I won't wait nine more months to make another video. Uh, we'll be trying to make videos every few weeks now that the construction's actually going on. I'll go get some drone footage. We'll get that back out there to you guys. If you haven't, like, subscribe so you can stay in touch with our journey. Uh, we'd love to meet you guys. Um, and just so you know, mark your calendars. October 29th uh, in Lewisburg, Kansas, we're gonna be having our amazing grand opening celebration. I'd love you guys to be there. Come out, see our venue, meet me in person. Let's grab some coffee, come out for a couple days and we'll schedule some time to sit down and talk one-on-one -on -one because I wanna meet you guys. I wanna know about you and your journey and if you can make it to Kansas, let's do it. It'll be a great time. This is a great community, it's a great industry and it's a great decision if this is truly what you want with your life. So thank you again for tuning in. Have a great rest of the week and we'll talk soon.